So let's start. This is right, I suppose. Okay, it's good. Who I am? I've been already introduced. So, well, I'm in Ubuntu. I want to run the Ubuntu community for like, well, nine years around, more or less. And I've been like in Canonica for eight years now, working before in Unity, desktop, and then now uh, GNOME. I'm also part of GNOME Foundation and I'm a developer since like five years. And so working as a maintainer for a few models and um, upstream mostly on GNOME Shell all and all its parts, all its components. Um, I work in the desktop team at Canonical, which is just on me, of course. It's all these people, uh, plus one you is, <laughs> is going to join us very quick, very in a few days. So I have a recent addiction, uh, plus, yeah. This is the, the people which makes actually Ubuntu Dex, on the decks of a reality. And so um, thanks to them, what we have. Um, so desktop team, not just pure desktop, let's say, it's also about, uh, well, we, our final goal is basically building the ISO for, which is then going to be installed. So, and that means uh, having the uh, the control and maintenance over a, a quantity of packages which are not just UI applications. For example, Network Manager is uh, like the backend side of the network, um, UI management in Ubuntu and GNOME, and that's a company which is totally no no UI side, but still is under our control. So everything which is backend and front-end in the desktop is our control, and basically from there up to we can go in the stack from the low level bits up to, to the, the interface. So it's, you know, it's not just that. Um, yeah, our goal is basically make a nice operating system, usable, easy to use, and accessible from the start. So we try our best to do that. Uh, we also now have the um, all the snap. Uh, activity around desktop applications, so GNOME applications are completely under our control. There's a sub-team of our team which is mostly into this, so making snapping application, especially GNOME application possible. Uh, we have contacts with the AOA team, uh, same in order to make possible the hardware to, to work uh, out of the box, although there are teams for that in Taiwan which are actually doing most of the kernel work, but we do the like as a, uh, again the, the desktop side of things, plus QA. Although, well, for that we always help, need help from community to test things and break things in order to make us fix them. Um, this is twenty nineteen on nineteen ten is going to be released well next week. So well, we since the last time you heard about desktop the Ubicon, is more than one year or less, but well, about one year. And uh, so in the middle there have been a release and what's happened so far. Uh, the biggest announcement that these days at ZFS, it's uh, not a new, but like a, a, a um, file system which has very attractive features which is there for some time, but never been really available in, for an easy installation in Ubuntu. There was um, a guy from the community maintaining a lot of packaging, a lot of uh, how-tos, how to get there, but it was just you know a community effort. And we work, especially Didier Roche, with this guy in order to make uh, the process smooth and then to include the packages inside Ubuntu itself. So starting from uh, 1910, you can install uh, Ubuntu from, uh, from the start with ZFS. It's still considered experimental, not the file system itself, but more like the, the distribution of it. But it will allow lots of nice features. For example, have snapshots every time you this upgrade or even earlier. And these kind of snapshots are not using, I mean, are using only the space extra you from the modification you did. So. For example, you, you take a snapshot, it takes zero, zero extra space, you modify a file of five megabits, you have at that point five megabits extra for 
they cut first and up shotting. So that will increase and eventually you can reach the double of your size of your disc, but this is something shouldn't happen in a desktop system where you want to take snapshots uh, quite often at the end and during upgrade. So that shouldn't be really an issue. Uh, it supports uh, like lots of features like trimming for SSH, for SSD, sorry. It's basically uh, native and the ability to, to move things around quite easily, quickly from partitions. And so it's a really modern operating uh, file system which has been uh, around for years and finally we can have it in a, in a production system. Um, this is not really like something recent, let's say, uh, because the effort started from 1804, but I think all the UI actually landed uh, as a SRU for a, a bit late on the LTS cycle. It's the support for light patch. So kernel light patch is a feature which your canonical offers for free up to three devices. So you can basically avoid to reboot your laptop. I think mine is now like, I think 40 days of uptime, and you basically just can suspend all the time and the, all the kernel uh, security uh, patches will apply on the fly without you doing any, anything. So this is a feature, check it out. It's basically under software and repository option. You just have to add a code you, that you get from the Ubuntu.com website and basically you are Protected can be used, of course, even in like in, in instances VMs and stuff. But when you have when your number of machine increases, you have to pay. Um, another thing, uh, desktop icons is a GNOME shell uh, extension we introduce, getting finally rid of the deprecated for years uh, desktop uh, using Nautilus which was basically using a full screen window uh, painted on the, on the desktop, which was not, a, not really something we want to do in a, in, a, in a modern operating system because we want the composer, so the shell to control everything. We wasn't working in, in Wayland. And so basically this allowed finally to have things working everywhere. We still need to work on this. Uh, there are lots of things going on, improvements. But yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it's there for a, for a release now, and we improved this time, this cycle. We're gonna improve it more next. Um, uh, Ubuntu Doc, the launcher, as apart from the indicator and support for progress, which is there basically since when we moved to the GNOME shell, and we did the, all this uh, uh, stream on the on the, on the repository, the official uh, maintainer. We supporting now also devices. So for example, external disks, mounted uh, cloud devices, whatever you have, like uh, Unity was doing basically. And so showing this in the launcher, it might show also the trash and use the trash as in Unity was for, for interacting with the icons to remove them, to eject or amount the uh, volumes, this kind of features can be all done, but not yet because it might need a bit of refactoring of the uh, of the extension. And this is all a community contribution, and we have to thank this guy who basically did all the work. Um, Yaru, Yaru is our team, starting in 1904. It's all made and maintained by community guys, and they're doing a really amazing job. They're, this is based now mostly in Adweta, which is the GNOME team, the default GNOME team, but completely um, uh, beautify with Ubuntu colors and with actually new designs for 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 uh, uh, UI elements. So it's a really great effort from the community, which uh, brought us to have a really magnificent get desktop these days. So again, thanks to the community. Um, snaps, snaps are, this is a list of GNOME snaps uh, we have, it's, most of them are maintained by us, but not only, and basically another effort we have been doing so far, uh, mostly my Ken Van Dani's team, is to keep all these apps to um, at the day, so to be able to install 
At the same time, uh, the the stable, which was before 332, now 334, and at the same time, all the edge, so the basically the Git version of it, which you can test using a, a, a base uh, snap, so basically every single snap, snap is very small to download, so you don't have all the clutter of in embedding everything. So, um, and again, this is a work which has been done and still is going on work even to get uh, GNOME to accept the, the Snapcraft uh, bits in the repository because we don't want, we want them to actually control this releasing process more than us, if when we can. Uh, so GNOME, uh, Ubuntu of course has two main upstreams, but upstreams I, well, I hope everybody's familiar with the term, which for me wasn't the first time I was to, to events, and upstream we basically is a source that we take uh, our software from and we modify and we are downstream to them. So, uh, well, our main upstreams are, of course, GNOME and Debian for two different set of things. And so starting with GNOME, which is like our UI operating system, we did lots of work upstream. This is uh, like low level work, which actually allowed us to, to, to improve the and modif and uh, personalize our, our experience of Ubuntu experience without uh, the need of basically uh, distro patching and change lots of code uh, depending on what GNOME was running on. So basically uh, now GNOME allows lots of personalization depending on where it's running. And this is a work we did upstream. Um, then this is another huge work, which is all uh, on the plumbing stuff. So all low low level but really important and this is a system d in a session support so system d is a, a basically process supervisor we use already for the system and we've been using for system services so far for many years now in ubuntu we started to use it also for managing um, the user space applications uh, for a long time, I think the first uh, bits in, were already into Unity for a nine, no, was it like uh, 1704 or maybe earlier? So uh, already at that time we, we were moving to this and now we, we propose to do the same to GNOME, which was before managing, managing all the, all the user daemon, all the user services using um, GNOME session. Gnome session we had like basic supervising, but it's not really like uh, didn't really allow many things. For example, management of these services, like it's top start again, or to manage, manage for example, the uh, support for a, for a daemon depending on the hardware. So let's say you have a US, a USB Bluetooth device, and then you want to launch the the, um, the company we manage that Bluetooth dangle. When you get in the, the, the Bluetooth dangle off, you don't want to, the daemon, daemon to run anymore. And so this was impossible before, while now, basically, yes. So we, um, we can adapt our session daemon, all depending on the current state or depending whether an application is invoking a service. So all service can be debus activated, we say. So let's say a service needs another, the other doesn't need to stay there running all the time. By we get it gets woken up at the moment that we basically call it. Uh, so socket activation and all this kind of things. It will allow even sandboxing of processes in, in case, but well, this is not done so far because let's say we trust GNOME. But, um, other few features, so the support for Volume over drive, actually amplification of volume, which is you know tiny but small feature. We added it already in, in Ubuntu and Unity, and then we ported everything to GNOME, and we and this is upstream now, so everybody using GNOME as it. Um, then ACFest, which are basically events, which are the GNOME community organizing around the world, depending on where people can meet, basically, and to do stuff to to decide, okay, let's go there and uh, work together on something. 
Uh, there are two pictures here. Like the first one was in in Taipei. It was, we were doing some work on the, the, the screen scaling, and so that was uh, what we did. And the other one is uh, in Cambridge for the um, performance access. So going into the details of the two, where the fractional scaling access brought us to having like fractional scaling Wayland support. So basically, all the clients can all the um, monitors of a desktop can be scaled. Depending on their uh, on the preference of the users to different fractional values, so one from one percent up to two hundred percent or four hundred percent, depending on the on the qual on the kind of monitor with in um, values in between, and it allows to have different scaling for different monitors. Here, for example, we have a monitor which is highly scaled; the other is less, and you can see the same. The same Nautilus window in the middle is actually showing bigger in a place, smaller in the other, and that's the the the, the idea. So basically, we scale up all the the widgets and then we scale down to the to their value. And this has been like quite huge work, especially to support the GNOME shell, and which we finished a couple of cycles ago. It can it's still an exper experimental feature. It can be enabled by this uh, G settings key. Uh, it's basically working well, although there are, we have some issues with X Wayland applications and so applications which still in Wayland run under an X11 uh, say, um, view. For those, we still have to do some more work, which is in the pro in the processes. But uh, yeah, one day. Uh, by the way, we still worked on X11 and fractional scaling that as well, so Ubuntu runs by default on X11 because uh, basically we want to be sure that, for example, if you, your, if our GNOME shell crashes, your session is not lost, we want to make sure it works on remote desktops. Uh, so there are still things which on Wayland doesn't allow us to be too confident to ship as default, so basically we we can't move at least for this LTS to Wayland, but well, we probably consider our next next LTS. Uh, so so far, we wanted to support still a uh, fractional scaling with it through X uh, extensions, which allow to have something like that. It can be more expensive, especially in the multi monitor setups with multi DPIs, but in general, I, I mean, it works well, and we might we have few. Issues like uh, visual issues, we're gonna fix next cycle, hopefully. So, apart from this, let's say, which this is going to be like default and XLTS, and so everybody can have a fractional scaling experience by default for those with IDPI monitors. Um, other work which has been basically done all this by Daniel Van Voot, which is uh, hardware accelerated videos on uh, Totem, uh, improved a lot, all the GNOME shell. Uh, Speed basically in many places, starting from <laughs> heaven handling up to the animation speed to with use and the new features we are landing nineteen ten are actually pretty juicy. Although well, maybe they here they might not uh, be look attractive, but they basically allow to save lots of CPU and lots of resources, especially when moving windows when. Even when moving the mouse, the mouse pointer, because that just the mouse mo pointer movement was making the CPUs to spin in some cases. So all this uh, geometric picking allowed to remove lots of OpenGLs and, and so GPU and CPU interactions, which are sometimes a bottleneck. And that, yes. This applies to both. It's it's. It's independent from the back end, basically. Um, then, our other upstream is Debian. We take most of the packages of them, but still, uh, we do also work in Debian. So, mo many packages sometimes have the Debian uh, number, ver version number, but actually uploaded by Ubuntu developers because we try to work on Debian directly some when we can. So, we basically, we we serve to 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 distros with just a sim, single uh, work. So when we can, we just do thing, all the things in in Debian. 
and then we synchronize them with Ubuntu. Uh, so nowadays, contributing Debian is actually a nice thing because they included they they moved to Salsa, which is a GitLab instance. So basically, you can just uh, clone these repos. There's this tool called G GBB Build Package. The name is ugly, at least, but well. Uh, once you learn to pronounce and to type, which might take a couple of weeks, um, once you're you're there, basically it's very easy to to manage package management, to apply patches, to import patches from upstream, so do all the Debian uh, development work which people can do. And I mean, everybody here is welcome to contribute and start to look out to help us because the desktop team has to every cycle has to update and manage like. A few hundreds of packages. So, uh, apps always welcome. So, uh, things looking forward for 2004. Uh, one thing we, we're trying to, to get into for a couple of releases now is USB Guard. It's basically a system to protect from USB devices, uh, both um, memory sticks, but also, for example, keyboards which might interact in moments where, for example, you're locking the screen or something. So we might disallow some some um, some keyboards, which might not be, able, for example, interact for that lock screen. Or uh, uh, block for ex devices depending on their origin, basically. So this is a nice feature, which is in the progress in GNOME. It has been partly landed, not everything. So we want to support this, but we also depend on seeing when this is actually hitting GNOME in order to be able to. Um, support uh, for uh, applications in uh, GNOME Control Center has been added in this cycle. Uh, and this allows to control a few options right now, like for example, permit an application to, to show notification or to, to be accessed by the GNOME shell for searching stuff. And these are all upstream modifications, but we want to include to introduce in this panel uh, for snapped application the permission management. So, for example, we have a snap, we access to a webcam, and we want to toggle this permission. You do that, or you want to disable the application to access to mounted file system again. So all the things, all the the, the interfaces and snap can access can be managed directly from here, like is now from Control Center. Uh, software center, sorry. Uh, fingerprint support. We are doing some work for this. Uh, so, so this is mostly an OEM thing. So producers want to have uh, fingerprint support for unlocking the desktops to work because most of the desktop now are shipping with those devices. <laughs> we have a bit of problems in terms of our uh, let's say framework, which has in, which we have, we have in GNOME, which is fprint D, which so far doesn't allow to load uh, proprietary drivers like most of these kind of drivers will unfortunately be. So in for this case, uh, we should do some like shims to allow drivers to work, and unfortunately, that's for most of the cases uh, the only option like in this laptop here uh, I we can I can do fingerprint recognition on you because somebody did a reverse engineer on the pro of the protocol because otherwise there's no production uh, product which actually shipping this information also because now chip says the information is our biometric data so it's not really something we can interact like we did before with with the glyphs and actually fingerprints recognition Game mode is another thing uh, we we try. We want to include introduce game mode is a is a already a daemon, desktop daemon, which allows to change the uh, depending on what you're running, basically. Uh, so mostly games, but only you. We adapt the the, the, the CPU performance to performance of saving, uh, and so this this is something we want to include is already on the works upstream. So we we should support this also for uh, for for our for other application like probably Steam and these kind of things. Um, 
WLS, it's the Windows framework for the, for for uh, for Linux, is uh, something which is also something we do because uh, we don't want Ubuntu is not just running or nowadays it's not on the on, on, on the uh, on bare hardware. We are, we also run like in other in other apart from virtual machines we have to support like. Uh, Windows, which is another target, and we have lots of users using Windows as um, as a like operating system to run actual Ubuntu. So where you can run uh, the applications, the Ubuntu application only, not only the CLI um, application, also UI applications. Um, it's something we, we want to support uh, um, properly in uh, in next release. There will be some some people working only on this and to make the experience to use Ubuntu on Linux better than the others, because I can see there are a lot of other distributions are also available and like we are in the bare metal in the decks, so we want to be like the best. So we're trying to. Um, then we have like lots of things we are committed to do, hopefully, you know, sometimes these lists are a bit a wish list, sometimes they're not, so we try to, uh, at least we say we try, <laughs> and then depending on uh, what we can. So for, um, of course, the SZ, all the SFS will work will continue properly to be like uh, considered almost stable in XLTS. Um, the, the performance work is still ongoing, it's basically never ending. And probably gonna support XFAT as a on user space, although the kernel support will arrive soon because uh, Microsoft said they would practically support a, a Linux uh, driver for that, so a kernel driver for that. So, when well, till that moment, we probably support through um, Fuse. Then still we continue with the improvements as well on Swap. Uh, what else? Yeah, basically maintenance of things, which are still under control. So we we do all this maintenance, all the cycles, and we continue. We're still committed to do to, to do this. Uh, of course, we we'll, we we'll look for what for no, GNOME three thirty six, which. Should be like um, used as a base unless there are no like huge changes we can't we can follow. Like sometimes it happened that we, for example, didn't update some component because it was too risky because of the changes. Uh, but yeah, normally these days we try to, to to switch completely to the new stable version of GNOME. So it should be up in the next time unless. Um, yeah, we're as I said it's actually. Uh, nice if people from community can help. We have like the example of Yaru, but not only, even like desktop packaging is something which we are not doing alone. Actually, every every Tuesday we have a weekly meeting with the with the um, Ubuntu Dex developers, and where there are canonical employees, uh, not there are people who actually works on the desktop just because they like it. So everybody is welcome, and there's a process, of course, to get into, but Contributions are very easy. There are lots of area for contributing. You can also contribute a GNOME stream, as I said, or snapping up GNOME applications. Or uh, if you are more in teaming, you can on Yaro team is is really like a very fun th thing to do. Or yeah, the classic Debian packaging, which is never dying. And with this, I thank you for the attention. And if you have questions. Yeah. So is CUPS going to be in a snap soon? CUPS the uh, printing no, stack? Well, because the, the drivers will be, um, we want to support drivers through snaps. So basically, a, uh, let's say a producer has proprietary drivers or not, we can ship those drivers through snaps. Right. So CUPS won't itself be snapped. Because uh, I no. wanted to run the printing stack on a Raspberry Pi. I don't know if that. Not for the ARM. It's pro well. It's probably it's probably not a snap in the desktop image by default. But uh, there is it's 
one of the first efforts I remember for being ported as an app, so it should yeah. be everywhere. Till started working on that, till computers. Hello, uh, we'll be Wayland by default. Uh, thank you. Wayland? Yeah, as I, said, as I said before, we can't ship Wayland by default on 2004 because it's basically too risky and we might lose uh, fe features which we depend on. For example, as I said, remote desktop support, so the ability to use your desktop remote. Yeah. And other things are, for example, just Unfortunately, we have crashes now on the UI and the, the GNOME components, the GNOME stack is huge, so we might have crashes on the on the shell. What happens in Wayland right now, since Wayland is a, uh, means that the GNOME shell is the main process managing the UI. Since these, we if that crashes, basically everything crashes down. And that means if you're working on something, you lose your work which might be, well, most of applications now save the state, but still not everybody, not all, and still like, it's not something we, we don't want, we want to lose. So this is probably a blocker which is gonna stay for a long time, because as I said, Wayland is not like X11, where you have a server, you talk to that, you trust the server to stay up, uh, but uh, when you build something on Wayland, it means you have to write everything, so the compositor and hold everything which is, which is um, run by the states in the same process. So it might be a bit risky to, to switch something like that. Anyone else? So Nautilus, uh, is Nautilus running in the background for the icons to show up, that uh, extension you talked about? Oh. Or is that not used here? No, it's it's not used unless you don't want to, okay, if you double click an icon, let's say, or if you copy something, you use Nautilus APIs. So Nautilus is debus invocated, launched in the case, on the, in the background, and does the operations. In the way that, for example, you're copying a big file, you're going to see on Nautilus the, the progress bar, so we, we, we control the, those operations, but per se, it's not running. So we just, re, we monitor the file and we show, not really anything. Okay, no more questions? Okay, thank you very much, Marco.